What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Trade Talk ahead of round nine. Uh, we're obviously coming out of a very carnage field round eight, so hopefully you guys don't have many bullets you have to deal with, but if you do, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, who you go, because looking at the numbers already, uh, there's a lot of players that there's not like one obvious trading target. There's a lot of people being brought in, so like you've got a lot of players that have been brought in by like two, three, four, five thousand coaches. So we'll go through all those and the most trade out players as always. Um, but, uh, before we do, if you are enjoying the content around here, make sure you do smash a big old thumbs up on the video. That'd be very much appreciated. And if you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button. We're on our way to three thousand subscribers. We just passed twenty two hundred. Um, so we're at less than 800 um, away from 3K. So if you can help on the challenge to 3K, click subscribe, and that would be very, very much appreciated. So let's get stuck into the most traded in out players. So it's not really a surprise to me that number one most traded in player this week is, of course, Nick Dacos against West Coast this week. Great matchup. Had a good game last week. So we're 122 of us that, uh, that kicked the match-winning goal as well. So 5,000 coaches are jumping on him. And at this stage, I want to be one of them. So I'll talk about my trades after, but he is without a doubt. If I can get him, I'll be getting him this week. So, And I'll tell you why I might not be able to get him. So we'll talk about that in a sec. Clayton Oliver's next. 4.6 are jumping on him. Um, I think it's fair enough as well. Looked pretty good last week. Scored 106. Um, got the Blues this week on Friday. So you've got to go on that early. So probably by the time you watch this video or just after, you'll know... Uh, Obviously, well, he'll be in the team. Uh, obviously, you'll you'll get final teams for that one. Um, so I don't, I, I don't even know why I said that. It's not really a debate if he's going to be in team or not, just into whether he can perform well. So I think the question is, can he can he keep it up? So obviously, the one game, his time of grant slightly increased, but he has been about that mid seventies anyway. So it's not like he took a massive increase in game time. Gave away four free kicks as well, so that could have been a bit bigger there. Had a lot of the ball. Um, I still think, you, if you can, the smart play is to wait one more week. Break even 97. Even if he goes 110, 120, he's only going to go up not even 20K. So I think it's better to wait one more week because if you do, it's got West Coast and then St. Kilda, back-to-back -back game. So great matchups back-to-back -back there. Um, but then you get to see him against Carlton, who are a bit of a tricky matchup, for, especially for midfielders. So I'd potentially want to watch one more week, but I know some people with all these bullets are in a situation where they can get two players in the 700. So I guess going early on Oliver is not the worst thing in the world, but obviously if you can, I'll probably wait one week and see how he goes and then look at bringing him in the following week. Jack Sinclair, next on list, 4.2 jumping on him. I like it, I really do. Uh, 156 last week, 100, yeah, 156 looked great. Hawthorne this week, great match. So they got a really good mat, uh, run as well to the bye. Um, Hawthorne, Frio, Melbourne, uh, West Coast, the good four. Then you've got Gold Coast and Brisbane, they're okay. But then if you have a look at this, I only realised this last night in the Q&A, one game post their round 15 buy is outside of Marvel. Marvel. Look at all the Marvel games here. Like, it's it's going to be really, uh, really good. I'm, I'm definitely got to be having him in my team before uh, round 16, I think, or just try and get him in at some point. I think I prefer Dacos just if you look between the two, but I think both are great options. If you can't get Dacos, I think Sinclair is definitely someone that's not a bad option to settle for, if you want to call it that. So Bruce Revel is next on this, 3.7K jumping on him. I think, again, as well, I think there's a bit of safety as well with getting a guy like, um, as people are calling him, Breville. Um, category, B, category B rookie from Papua New Guinea. Uh, thanks you, Corey Blackledge, who put that in the um, Q&A last night about that. Um yeah, break into five. I only scored the 52 last week, but uh, I guess obviously the good thing is, one, he had 13 kicks, no handballs. Low time ground, which which wasn't great. But then again, with all the Brisbane line injuries, his job skew is probably safe, at least in the short term anyway. So he would almost be my downgrade odd pick out of everyone for this week, just because the job security going forward is good. I think Lockie Studman, who actually we'll talk about him now. So Sarong's uh, next. Great option. If you're looking at him, 3.6K, jumping on him. Sarong last week, 141. Looked great. He's got that round 13 by, which is really nice as well. I think the upcoming run is decent. Yeah, St. Kilda, Collingwood, Melbourne, then the Bice, and then Dogs. So it's a pretty nice run. Sydney's probably the toughest one, but Sarong, it uh, doesn't really matter. I think, you think he's pretty consistent. So he's a great option if you're looking at him. But yeah, Sullivan, obviously with Revel. Sullivan's a good option. He looked really good coming on sub. Scored 57. Obviously, mature raising, he's 26. Uh, well, no, it's right there. He's 26. Um, I think 
uh, Brucey is um, actually uh, like 20, yeah, 23. So both mature age, um, which is obviously always nice when we're looking at them for rookies. Um, with Sullivan, I guess the question is, is just that, so he's got a good match against West Coast this week. The hope is he's not the sub, but we're not going to know because he's going to, he's got the second last game, unless you, you've got things waiting until the final game, which I don't know much of what would be. Maybe if you're looking between him and Bruce, if someone wasn't the sub, you could go Sullivan this week because he's got the better matchup. But I'm a bit nervous with the fact that Dugowie and Tom Mitchell are listed as a week on the injury report. So they're both expected to be back next week, which means Sullivan could be out of the team. Because look what's happened with Finlay McRae. Like, it could just be that. I'd almost be happy to go, if you're looking for a rookie this week, go Bruce this week and then go, okay, if Sullivan goes well and he's in the team the following week and isn't the sub, I think then I'd be I'd be pretty happy then to jump on him. Um now, I'm just looking up here on the fixturing. Does Collingwood play early next week? Yeah, they've got the first game on the Saturday. So we're pro- you're probably going to know um, if he's the sub or not the following week. So I'd probably wait till the following week after. Um, like Gold Coast Geelong, probably not doing anything with many of those players. Maybe if you try and Dempsey out. But um, then Sydney Carlton. Yeah, I don't think there's too much going on there. So, yeah, it's that, it's probably good there. And, and, again, if you didn't get Bruce Revel ne- uh, this week, you could always switch to him the following week if he was in. So, yeah, I'd probably wait a week on uh, Sullivan. But, again, if you need him, uh, I don't think he's a bad option at all. Um, Jake Saligo, uh, good op- uh, I think he's a solid option. Um, like, he's been really 3.3K jumping on him. I'd almost, if you're looking at him and Oliver, I'd almost go Saligo this week over Oliver just because we've seen what Saligo's done the past month. He's been really, really good from a not just a uh, fantasy sense, but from a crow sense. Well, f- past five weeks, actually. So he hasn't been a huge score. I don't think, if you don't get him, you're not going to be burnt. Like, 115 was high, but that was heavily inflated by tackles. Uh, it wasn't a tough match against Port. So, And they have got a good run coming up, and they've got the round 15 ball, which is good for players like this, that if he makes 100, 100K or so, trade him in his buy 830, you can go to, there's going to be a lot of fallen premiums at that point um, that you can jump over to. So, I think with the round 50 by makes it a lot more appealing. So I'd be happy to jump on him and I'd, I'd rather probably him over Oliver for this week. Um, so Saligo's not a bad option. Kausha Deer, um, not a bad option, but he's not going to be a huge score every week. I know he got a 67, but he's, he's more of a key forward. Uh, look pretty good, um, but I'd, I'd, I think I'd rather the other guys. But hey, if, if you fancy Kausha in your team, then uh, yeah, you could definitely, you could go down that path. And the final two players here, James Peatling. I'm, I'm fairly keen on Peatling. Um, I wasn't originally, but he got a 115 last week. Looked pretty good. Um, negative 11 break even. And I, I'd actually use um, Selby's price predictor for this. And it was like if he scored like an 80, he'd still, or, uh, sorry, a, a, um, a 60 this week, he's still going up like 50, 50 odd K. So even if it was a 60 this week and then he was out of the team, he's still getting a decent chunk. And this, I'm talking, that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario is he stays in the team. He has a three-week play. I think I said if he, I think if he averaged seventy-five or so of the three weeks, he makes roughly one hundred and fifty k or around about that mark. And then you can trade him out for five ninety in your forward line. It's not going to cost you much to get up to a forward premium that you like. So I like him. He would bench a rookie. I think he's going to score better than a rookie. Um, his points per minute have been pretty good. Like he was sub against West Coast, scored thirty-three in just over a quarter. He was sub against Gold Coast, didn't score great with only eight points there. Um, that was Adelaide Hills. Yeah, Adelaide Hills. So, obviously, a bit of a weird ground there. Um, obviously, 52 there, not great. Obviously, he's playing a bit more forward in that role as well. But since he's played the more midfield, he scored 38 in about, well, not even a quarter of the game against Carlton, then 81 and a 115. So, scoring's been good. Um, so, I think he's a, a decent option. And I think it's it's almost low risk as long as he's not the sub because he's going to make cash. You can play him on field. He's probably going to score better than the rookie. So yeah, I'd, well, I think he will score better than the rookie. So I'd, I don't mind in a forward line where we're bereft of options. Um, and he could be a option that could make some cash and score some points. And Kyle McCurch is the other one um, at number, the 10th most traded in player of the week. I don't mind it. I think, guess it feels dirty trading him out, then trading him back in. Break even 18. I think the only thing that makes me lean to Peatling over him is that he's a forward. And the fact that he's got better matchups. Because if you look at the matchups, Essendon Marvel's solid, but Gold Coast at TIO is a little bit scary um, with the dewy conditions. I know he doesn't rely on heavy marks to get his score. Then he's got Port Adelaide um, and then the bye. So 
It just make like those two matches make me nervous, but I still think you can get him in. Again, look at this. If he goes 67, 71, 80, you're still making you nearly 100K before the buy. So again, I think you can definitely do it. If you're more keen on McKercher over Peatling, I couldn't knock you for it. Um, I'm probably going Peatling to save a little bit more cash and as a forward, but I still think both could be solid enough options. And and I say McKercher has tough matchups, but some people I've said again, got bullets they got to deal with. So you might go one, you might go a, a Yo down a, a McKercher and then you might be able to go in a, like a, sorry, you might be able to go Zach Williams to McKercher and then you might be able to go a, a Yo up to a Dacos or, or something like that. So that could definitely be a play as well. Um, which is why McKercher isn't a terrible option. I would, and I'd, you could consider it. But uh, Zorko's here. I'm still nervous about bringing him in. You missed that big, big score. It's not going to happen again. He's not scoring 183 again, or was it 183 or whatever? 184? You're not scoring that again. Um, that was a massive game. Um, if you had him, great. And kudos to you for having him. Um, I just don't see how I could bring him in at this point. He's way too expensive, and he's not going to play every game from here. I just I cannot see it. Um, he's a guy that post buys, if he's still doing this, you could look at him then, but I think he's not going to do it for the whole season, um, or he's going to miss a game at least. Darcy Jones, solid downgrade option as well. Probably the next, I'd probably, you could go him over like a, a Bruce Revel and a Lockie Sullivan. I think Revel's job security is probably going to be better moving forward, I think, than a Darcy Jones, just because Giants are so stacked. He has looked good, but I could see him being the sub. Um, and Revel, I guess, with all the injuries there, is probably going to stay in the team for a little bit. So, that's the only reason I'd rather revel. But Darcy Jones, negative eight break even, you definitely could do, uh, still do it. Dale, Parrish, Moore, all good options, all underpriced. I'd rather Parrish and Moore over Dale, I think. And Dale, you've probably missed more, most of the boat, I think, there. He's up at eight, 806, break into 50. He's been good last three weeks. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. With the dogs, I don't know if I want too much part of the dogs. I know I've got Bond and McRae, but uh, I think Bond's fine. It just, uh, McRae's the, the issue for me, but... Uh, Parrish is good. Uh, I like Dylan Moore as well. And, and yeah, obviously Merritt, Martin, Holmes, Dunkley, Luke, Ryan. They're all solid options if you want to be bringing any of them in. Going to the most traded out players, no surprises, is that Elliot Yo's the most traded out. Nearly 20K have already jumped off him already, and that's going to continue to rise. Uh, he's going to be out at least this week and probably next week as well. It sounds like it's more like a two-week um, injury. but And at the end of the day, he's been a good pick. Just under 89. Um, he's got through eight weeks for us. He didn't get injured on like a like a, a sub twenty score like he has done a couple of times in the past. Made us some good cash like he made us what was it one hundred thirty six k. If you jumped off him uh, last week or in the week before, he probably made you close. We made you over one fifty, um, and he averaged over ninety for you. So he's been good, and you can definitely be like that one where you shake hands, say thanks for your service for the team, and, and trade him out and, and go to a go to a, a fully fledged premium there. So, yep, he can go. Rosie's interesting. I think if Tom Green's out, I think you've probably got to trade one. I don't know if you could hold both if they're both out. That's just a lot of coin and um, points on the bench. I'd be trading Rosie over Tom Green. It sounds like Tom Green's going to play this week. Um, so you could keep Rosie on your bench, bench him for the week, bring him on hopefully next week. Um, if both are out, you could trade Rosie. But hey, I don't mind if people trade him out because... There is still a bit of an unknown with him at the moment with uh, with uh, his injury because who knows if he comes back next week or not because you never know it could be. It sounds more like he played last he played last week. It sounds like it's the same thing again. Gets a week's rest. He comes back the week after. It probably more sounds like, but it could be a a two week thing. But I expect him back next week, um, which means you can hold Matt Roberts five point six k jumping off. And again, if you know bullets, you could jump off him. I think I still like holding him. I know he's got a break in eighty two, but he's been pretty consistent. He's actually scored a fair few 80s this year um, and 90s. So he's only got the one, two, he only had the two 60s before last week. Every other score was over 80. Um, so suggest that's suggesting he's probably going to go above that. He only had the one mark where normally he'd taken at least five in every game. Um, so if you add those up, that's over a 60 again. I still think he's solid to keep. I, I'm I'm pretty happy to keep him to his buy. He's got Freo Carlton Bulldogs. That Bulldogs game would be nice as well at Marvel. Um, but again, if he gets you up to a premium and you've got no issues, I'm st you can still trade him. Break even is still 82. He's not going to make a lot more cash. But um, I think with the other issues, I think he's. I think we can still hold him. Tom Green, if he plays, I think he's still a hold. I know obviously it sucks that he gave you a seven and he went down 100. Uh, sorry, uh, went down 78k. He's got a break into 166. But without a doubt, you are going to be bringing him back in. I will certainly be targeting him, um, and and everyone else will be. So there's no point jumping off. And then jumping back on, 
at most, he might miss this week, but he'll be back next week. But like, he's a test this week, so if he's not back this week, he'll be back next week. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd just play like a Graham or a Clovis or something on field this week for him and and hold him. And, and if he misses, but I think he'll play, so he's a hold for me. Zach Williams can go. I honestly don't really care if he plays or not. I think it's just time to go. He's just been that frustrating. He's the probably one of the main candidates in the Carlton team to, to be subbed out. Um, just look at that. Like one score over uh, two score. No, sorry, one score over seventy five and two scores over seventy all year. Just not getting it done. Um, he was solid up to round solid enough up until round five, but last three weeks have just been bad. So he's got to go, I think, regardless. So I'd just be trading him. He'd almost be I'd prioritise trading him over like your Greens and your Roberts and Rosie um, and stuff like that. Dempsey can go two and a half thousand jumping off him again. He's not the worst player to have on the bench at the moment, but again, if if you go him down, he's, he's Cash generation's finished. Go him down and someone up. That's still definitely, you can do that. Um, so, yeah, he can go. I, he's got tough a few tough ones to come. Port this week. Gold Coast at TIO next week. Giants at GMH the week after. They're three not great matchups, especially for wingman slash high half forward. So, yeah, I would be trading if you can. But he's not the worst part just if he's on your bench to just almost leave in there. If you've got other issues like your yo's and... And Williams and that to deal with. Um, like I've got Yo, Roberts, Williams, Dempsey. I'll be trading Williams and Yo first before Dempsey, and then before definitely before Roberts. Um, Seth Campbell, a bit the same with Dempsey. If he's on your bench and you can go him down, great. If it does not enough, then that's fine. If you've got other things to do, uh, same thing. A little bit the same as Sanders, but then again, in 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 a way, if Sanders is named this week, I'd definitely rather keep him over these other guys. I know he's got a break even in the, I think the eighties, the eighty three. But if he comes back in. Because obviously it's obviously unfortunately Liver's out for a little bit, um, and hopefully he comes back. But they're I don't know, we will have to see with what happens with that, and hopefully he does. But Sanders could come back in, had a decent game in the VFL on the weekend, so you could hold him, and he could put up a solid enough score. So I would hold, and he could be at F six this week, and he would I think he'll go okay against Richmond if he plays, and obviously he could be the subs. So that's something to keep an eye out for as well. Harvey Thomas, uh, same thing with Camberwin Dempsey. If he can go, great. Um, He's not a, like a must trade, but again, he can go if that's what you need to do to trade him out. Uh, and Tom Powers, the number 10th most trade out player here. See a lot of all spread out as well, trades besides Yo. Tom Powell, I still don't think I'd trade him out. Um, like really in the forward line, who are you going to? Um, there's other issues in, in our teams, I think, over Tom Powell. Um, he went to the, more in the midfield last week. I know he's got a 71, but... Like, really, as forwards, you're only getting 85, 90 best case, so you're not losing that much, and you can get more of an upgrade in another position. I think this game at TO could actually suit a guy like Tom Powell. Like, we saw in the game against, was it Brisbane in round four, had a lot of tackles, 15. This could be a game where he has 15 touches and, like, 10 tackles and puts up a solid score. So I'm still, I'd still hold him. I think he's a guy you hold to the bye. If he hasn't done anything in these three games, um, obviously a couple of tough ones, uh, but if he hasn't done anything in the next three weeks, I think you can train him in his buy. But I'm, I'm still happy enough to hold him. And then when you look at the other guys here as well, like your, your Dersma can go, Fife can go as well. But then again, you could look at it and say, well, his rest is out the way now. He's got a buy in four weeks, so he's probably going to play all, all four weeks. So you could hold as well. Lazaro can go, Cadman, Combin, Gallagher, Howes. They can all go sharp. You could keep... Um, he showed last week he's still, he's still capable of putting up a score. He's got a decent run to his buy. He's got Sydney at Optus. Sydney's not great, but obviously Optus is a bit better. He's then got Saints at Marvel, which I think I'm, well, I'm keeping him this week. So I think I'll definitely be keeping him around 10 as well. That's a great game. He could put up a very good score there. Then Collingwood at Optus as well. So and that's pretty good. People might be nervous seeing T.O. Traeger Park. That is not the... Uh, same one. That's Alice Springs. It's not um, Darwin. So, and I'm pretty sure those TIO Traeger Park games that have every time I've seen them pop up, they've been actually um, during the day. So they're not normally night games. Yeah, there you go. Sunday, um, 1 p.m. Eastern is that uh, Melbourne free game. So that's a day game. So it's not going to be slip or anything like that. So I wouldn't be worrying about that too much. Um, so yeah, I don't mind holding a Jeremy Sharp like Jackson as well. Can uh, defensive Darcy's out. Darcy, you probably hold him, but you. Can, he can go, but then again, he's dropped so much in price now. He's down to seven hundred k. He's dropped a fair bit last few weeks. Who are you going to as well? If you've got other issues, he's not the biggest issue, but you could trade. Um, and then like Harley Reid, few people trading him out interestingly, but I'd be, uh, I'd, I think I'd be holding as a lot bigger issues than Harley Reid in our teams. But then again, some people might be in a good position. Top five trade targets for the week: Dacos number one. Not really much more to add for that. He's got 
uh, West Coast. He's highly owned. He could put up a big score this week. Probably going to be a good captain option as well. He'd be my number one. I think number two, I've got Jack Sinclair. Um, I think if you've got Dacre, I think Sinclair's a very good option. He's got Hawthorne this week. He's dropped a, a bit of cash already this season. Obviously, went up 42K, but he's still down 76K in the uh, season. Um, he's looked better the last couple of weeks. I think, is it back-to-back tons now? Yeah, back-to-back tons. Obviously, didn't look great against the Dogs, but playing more midfield, I think he'll be good moving forward. I'd, I'd be a fan of, of bringing uh, Jack Sinclair in if you've already got a Nick Dacos. Number three, I think I've got James Peatling. Um, and the reason he's behind Sinclair is just because Sinclair is going to be a whole season long hold, whereas Peatling's probably a shorter play. But I like Peatling with the negative 11 break even, going to make a fair bit of cash quickly um, as long as he's not the sub. Obviously, if he is the sub or he's dropped, obviously he wouldn't even be in the top five. But I think you, I think you can't drop him after the way he performs. He was one of their best on the weekend. Um, I think he's bought himself a few weeks in the side. Um, I think he's, he's shown he's probably ahead of like a Harvey Thomas at the moment as well. So. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. Obviously, if Cogs and Green are back, it'll be very interesting to see what his role is. But I think he'll still score a, a, at least a 60, even if he's not. Because I think he's shown he's getting in that midfield rotation. Um, even when he's been subbed on with Cogs and that there, he's still got some CBAs. Um, and I don't see Cogs and Green necessarily being full-time mids this weekend just with their their injuries and stuff. And Cogs, obviously, first week back. So I could see Peeting getting that bump this week. But it could just be maybe next week that he doesn't. But I still like him to make some quick cash. Number four, um, I'd probably go probably go Dylan Moore, actually. I'd probably go Dylan Moore at number four, just because if you're looking for a forward, got the Saints, he's playing high up the ground. Um, I think a few people are looking at forwards this week, so um, he's probably your pick at 750k, 53 break even. He's down about 50k on the season, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 44k on the season, so I think I'd be happy enough to jump on him as well. And I think at number five, Five, I'd have Darcy Parrish. Um, looked great last week, 147. Um, his time ground was back up. I don't know if that was obviously with Caldwell being injured and and maybe it missed the rotation or something like that, but I think that he looked good. He's looked back. The last two weeks, he's looked good. I know he only paid 6 steps against Collingwood, but he looked good. And I think that he's at a good enough price that you could, you could definitely jump on. So I like Parrish um, if you want to jump on him. I also really like Saligo as well. And if you need that extra 100K, I would potentially go to league over Parrish. The only reason I got Parrish in fifth over him is because I see Parrish being a guy you can keep past the buys, whereas Saligo's a guy I think you ride till he's round 15 by, then you jump off of him because he's not going to be close to a top eight, whereas in a world, Parrish could be a 105 guy um, or more and be close to the top eight. So uh, that's why I would go him. But again, if you can afford Sarong, I like it still. I don't still don't mind Rekircher as well. Um, if you want to go there... Um, there's plenty of options I don't mind as well. So that would be my top five for the week. My trades this week, uh, at this stage, I'm looking at Zach Williams to James Peatling um, and uh, going Clayton, uh, sorry, not Clayton Oliver, going uh, Elliot Yo to Nick Dacos. Um, I just think I need to get Dacos in. Obviously, the spanner potentially in the works is that, um, or thrown in, is that uh, Jordan Sweet's obviously been ill, obviously missed training on Monday and Tuesday. Um May by the time the video is out, we might have heard more about it. Um, it just sounds like he's just it's it's it's, it's sick. I don't know if it I don't know if it's COVID or anything like that, or if it's just he's ill. But it is normally if it, you're sick, depending on how bad you are, you might only miss a few days. Like it might just be precautionary him sitting out, not getting anyone else sick, and he'll be back. It is Monday and Tuesday, so we still have obviously today. We still got they fly, I think they go go to uh, Melbourne tomorrow. Um, so there's still a couple of days. We'll find out tomorrow. If he was out, which would be bad for not only myself, but for everyone else that went a Marshall or a, or a Cherry or a Grundy down him to play him at R2, is that I won't be able to get Dacos this week, and I'll probably at that point bring in Tim English. Um, I'll just pay up for him. Um, I th- I, he's shown the last three weeks that like, he's still going to be one of those top few rucks, and I think I'd rather him over uh, Ryan Marshall at the moment just because of the Marshall injury worry. Um, probably week to week, and, and Jack Hayes is there. I know that Sam Darcy in the team for Bulldogs, but English has shown last few weeks that he's still the main number one ruckman in there, so I'll, I'll probably bring in English. So I'm getting English to a day cost this week, one of the two, and I'll still be able to get Peatling any, either way. I might get Darcy Jones potentially instead, or a Rev if I want to save a lot of cash, or a McKercher, but at this stage, I'm pretty happy bringing Peatling being the forward. Um, so there we go. 
If you've got any trade questions, put them in the comments below or let me know what your trades are uh, this week um, and comment them uh, below and your questions, I'll try and get to them uh, as soon as I can. Um, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you can get to 100 uh, likes uh, like you guys normally smash it 100 on all these. If you can do 150, that'd be awesome. Um, so I, mean, I think we normally get 2K people that watch this video each week. So what? Just what if even if one in twenty of you can like it, still two hundred likes. So if you just smash the thumbs up, it really, really does help out the channel a lot. So it'd be very much appreciate if you can do that. If you haven't subscribed as well, make sure you do. I know over half of you haven't subscribed yet, so if you can hit the thumbs, uh, hit the thumbs up as well, and subscribe uh, so we can hit three uh, k before the end of the season. That is the goal. We're less than eight hundred away now, so if we can hit that, that'd be fantastic. Um, and yeah, follow me at the socials at BalsDT across all them. I'll be back on Friday with Tim for our usual pre-lockout chat, answering your questions. Uh, if you want to check out the Q&A from last night, check that out. And then the uh, the pod with Cara from Sunday night. And obviously, as I said, back Friday. And then the watch along as well will be Saturday night. Uh, at this stage, we'll be doing the uh, Western Bulldogs and Richmond game at the MCG. So um, looking forward to that one as well. So make sure you guys tune to all of those. But until the next video, uh, happy rage trading. I haven't everything like that. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. So I'm out. Cheers.